Well, it's only 10.59 according to my clock. I, we were, I just heard you talking about the funeral up at the hill yesterday. There was a full crowd there, a lot of people. And I love the time. It was supposed to start at 1. We didn't get started until 1.15. <laughs> it's like, no, people are still outside. Let's wait for them to come in. So I love that timing. It's like, just relax. And it was nice being up there and being amongst friends. We were saying goodbye to Jack McCord. And uh, of course, we were together at Sacred Ground when we were on the hill way back when. And Jack was a part of that family. So a lot of people loved him. And, and we put it up on the board out here, up at the Tribal Center. So Dan was ill. He, he was asked to do the service, but he couldn't. He wanted to, and in the last minute he says, I just can't. And so he stayed home. I said, well, whatever, I got your back. And so I ended up having to do this, or getting to do the service yesterday. And uh, it was just relaxing. Uh, I, yeah. you know, maybe maybe 11, 11, 15 or something. Wonderful. <laughs> well, it was all laid out, so all I had to do was follow the order. And uh, I'm realizing it's hard for me to read my own notes. Even if I have it laid out, it looks like it's even. It's like I can't read my stuff. But anyway, good morning to everybody who is here. And Sacred Ground, uh, hello online. Today is Sunday, October 15th. And uh, we do have a nice bulletin that's been laid out. Who did it this time? Rebecca. So please, if you don't have one yet, grab a bulletin. It has everything listed. And I don't think there's any changes coming up that we need to know of. Um, next week, next Sunday would be our communion. It's the fourth, today's the third Sunday, but next would be our fourth Sunday, so we have our communion. Rocky, I'm told, is still hunting and hasn't got the game yet, so maybe he won't be here. So stand by, man. We need to, we need to, we need to cover him. Um, and then the fifth Sunday is coming up, of course, this after that, there's going to be a fifth Sunday. Rebecca will lead worship. So invite all your kids in. It'll be a kids' day. Rebecca is, or uh, Veronica is sick today. Who else is not here? James is sick. So um, we'll pray for them in just a moment. Uh, in fact, why don't we pray right now? Read your bulletin. Why don't you come up? And let's pray for the sick people. And we plead the blood of Jesus. Here and we welcome the Spirit of Jesus, the Holy Spirit. Yes. yes, we agree. Father, we just lift up all the people that are sick. Heavenly Father, thank you that you will strengthen them and that your help, I mean, that your blood is what heals us. You made provision for us, Lord, and we receive that provision. Lord, we receive our healing in Jesus' name that belongs to us. You've provided it for us. When the enemy comes in, Lord, we will. Raise the standard, and that's the word of God. Lord, we thank you for our healing and our provisions. And Lord, thank you that um, you're going to do a quick work in Israel. I heard the prophet say that it, uh, the Lord has given Israel an iron fist to uh, uh, squelch and stop this attack quickly. And it will be over quickly. And we thank you for that, Father, in Jesus' name. Bless us in our worship today. Amen. It's worship. See you guys, kiddos, this morning. <laughs> the other part, the other part. <clears throat> I saw the light. Amen. I saw the light. I wonder to wingless life filled with sin. I would let my Savior. And Jesus came like a stranger in the night.
you with our praises and with our words. We thank you that you are the answer. You are just the answer, not just. You are the answer. Lord, it's your blood that covers us. And as we talked about in Sunday school, grace that covers us because not one of us needs just to say we're self-righteous. We did it all. No, Lord, we need your grace and we need your blood. Nothing but the blood of Jesus.
on our lips when that day comes for us to lay down and say, I'm ready, Dad. <laughs> I'm ready to come, Father. Speaking of, you know, Dave Eshelman, uh, he did that just the other day. And one of his favorite songs, I'm told by Kelly, is Rain Dance. And so we'll sing this and I'll think of him probably forever. And you are free to dance. You don't have to dance if you don't want to. But we sing Father, hear our prayer.
that he is so good and perfect and kind and perfect in all his ways. I'm so glad of that. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Thank you guys for drumming and thank you all for worshiping. <laughs> Well, thank you, Father. You are a good, good Father. You never Perfect in all your ways. Your property. Perfect in all your ways. About a 30 pounder. That was on that trail going to the outhouse. When the high water come down, they were talking about that needle on that trail. <laughs> Thank you, Lord, for your fish. Amen. <laughs> Heavenly Father, we thank you that you are good to us always, and you pour blessings out upon us, and we pray that you continue to pour the blessing of your latter rain upon us, that you would fill us up, as, as was spoken yesterday, you anoint our heads with oil so that our cup can overflow with goodness and light, and spill over to others, not just here. But thank you, Lord, that this is a safe place where we can gather. We can draw together. We can encourage one another. And we can receive of you. And I pray that you would use each one of us as you use us like, like pieces of a puzzle, like was in prayer this morning. We all have a place. We all have a piece. We all have a, a role to play, every single one of us. And even out there, Father, those who are maybe afraid to come in, let us go out and reach them then. But have your way, Lord, and, and capture people by your love and by your light. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Good to see every one of you in here. Um, yes, indeed, we were at the Tribal Center yesterday, and it was just relaxing. I, I got to say, uh, from the point of where we started, it was supposed to start at 11. We got 15 minutes late. It's like, okay, I don't worry about it. And... Uh, we had an agenda, and it was easy to read. I can't read my notes. I, I just, I've just served, determined that even this morning. But I can read the Bible, and so that's what I'm going to do. Let me first say today is October 15th, and I would like to dedicate this message to my little sister, whose birthday is today. She's in Idaho. And I also dedicate it to Jack and his family, Jack McCord and his family, the, the nephew of Helen. Helen, yeah. And they were there, and it was lovely to see people that we knew from the tribal days. And um, so, and I think of Dave too. I, I mentioned Dave Eshelman, and I think of Ron Courtlaver. We're we're losing people. To, they're going to heaven, and praise God for that. But it's still hard to, to walk this earth. We still have our feet planted, and as the song says, one by one they went away. You know, but we will be reunited again. So, death, where is your victory? And where is your sting? So yesterday, and I didn't mention this, but it was the, the Ring of Fire. Anybody get to see that? Oh my God, I wish I did it. We were look, I was looking at standing on my deck and I couldn't see the sun. But the, the light was different and it wasn't a total eclipse, but it was like a white light. It's kind of neat. But it was a full gold ring. Yeah, the Ring of Fire. Yeah. And it's interesting that I, I read in the papers that the missiles into Israel, they were shooting into the center of Israel so that they would have a Ring of Fire. I go, well, isn't that amazing? So, Lord, we pray for all the people who are under war and under attack. How horrible that must be. Lord, murder and death and blood. Amen. Jesus, help us. And arrest that. Stop evil, we pray in Jesus' name. And help us, Lord, protect us here. And, and help it not to happen here. Help us to be vigilant, but help us to pray in Jesus' name. And the innocent Palestinians, too. Everybody, innocent blood. God doesn't like the taking of innocent blood. Yes? Yeah, I put um, a friend of mine took a picture of the eclipse. Took a picture of the eclipse. And the, the ring of fire. Okay. And then a little uh, eclipse thing down here. Okay. And he sent it to me and he took a picture of it. Oh, good. And I put it on um, paper. A picture. So I'm sure you can see pictures, and that's the way I resolved myself, was I can't see it here, but it started here in Lincoln City, Newport, and went down to Texas, and then through Mexico, and up through South America, where Canyon and Curacao could probably see it. So I'm thinking, oh God, maybe make a shoot. 
bring Kenny to us soon, we pray in Jesus' name. And even beyond that, more important, bring Jesus to us. We look for the second coming of Jesus. How many saw the 217 one here? Oh, the, the total eclipse? Yeah, I saw that. That was working. That was amazing. In a parking lot. I was in a store parking lot. But anyway, tonight is the start of a brand new month in the Hebrew calendar. It's Cheshvan. And um, I just find it fascinating to watch that. The, the Torah portion, we don't do that. We used to walk, we used to read the Torah portion. And it was like for a year, we, we met on Saturday mornings at 7. And it was fun. It was actually good. We haven't done it now for two years. Uh, but the portion is the no, no walk. Noah, he walked with God, and so this month is the, the day that supposedly he went into the ark, got closed the door, and it started raining, it, it flooded on him. So he walked with God, the earth was full of robbery, does this sound familiar? All flesh had corrupted its way on the earth, and then the note that I found on this Jewish site, it said this, wherever you find promiscuity and idolatry, a pestilence comes upon the world and kills both good and bad alike. And you talk about Palestinian children and innocent blood. Lord, we just don't like that. I don't care who does it, but sometimes pestilence comes upon the earth and war comes. God told Noah to build an ark. In Genesis 6.13, God said to Noah, I have decided to put an end to all flesh. So he brought the flood. He promised never to bring it in. That's the rainbow that we need to claim back. But Jesus today is our ark, right? Where back then it was different. Jesus has come. And we need to get into the ark of protection. Who is Jesus? So that's what it's all about. Um, and the guy that I like to watch or listen to because he, he shows videos like up to the hour of what's going on back there. But he says, we are experiencing a very dark demonic activity all around the world with its greater manifestation in the Middle East. The only way for believers to stay calm and focused is by being in the Word and relying on the Lord. And I say amen to that. Amen. Stay in the Word. That's what I want to do. And so if you would turn with me please to Joel. Joel is book number 29. He's number two of the minor prophets. All there in Joel. His name means the Lord is God. And it's only three chapters, which I, I find delight in. Unlike Isaiah or Jeremiah, where it's like, oh boy, how am I going to preach on this? So I'm looking for Jesus in the middle of Joel. And isn't it interesting, and I decided not to name them after practicing this morning, the songs that I heard when reading through Scripture. I, I came across at least eight songs. I won't name them by name because they probably wouldn't mean anything to you. But I hear songs. I hear, I hear music, including one that I have to say. It's in the first chapter, and it's verse 5. It says, wake up. <laughs> and I'd like to announce that Jerry Chapman is going to be here with Leslie in November, the middle of November, and he's got a song called, Wake Up! Sleeping Giant, Wake Up! And so that's right there in Joel, Wake Up! So that's one of the songs that comes to mind. And we pray. That word came from a Billy Graham word to the Native American community, like you are a sleeping giant. And I don't think that was original because it came when Japan attacked America, Pearl Harbor. And it says, you have awakened a sleeping giant. So I think that came first. The Billy Graham addressed the Native American community. Wake up. And that's what I love about the Native American community is we can speak the name of Jesus. We can hold up the name of Jesus. And that's what we did yesterday. Sometimes in our own politics, we can't even say the name of Jesus. We can't speak the name. We can't pray. So wake up. Wake up. And then Joel 1 and 2 is about an army of locusts. And so this is another song. We, Dan pointed this out that we sing, they march on the city, they climb on the walls, great as the army, da, 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 da. and we think that's a song of victory. It's like sound the shofar, but it's actually an invasion of locusts. And how good is that going to be? Not very good at all. Since there were four kinds of locusts, one would eat, another would eat, another would eat, another would eat, until they're 
it's nothing left. And that's what that song is about. But I can blow the shofar. Should I do that? Yes. Yeah, okay. This would be a, a sound of warning because we speak against the enemy and we proclaim Jesus, his blood, his salvation, his healing only. So sound the alarm. Blow the trumpet in Zion, it says in chapter 2. And so verses 1 through 2, it, it includes rend your heart. Because the Lord is coming a second time. He promised it. So in the end of chapter 2, it says, Rend your heart. Even now, return to me with all your heart, with fasting and weeping and mourning. Rend your heart and not your garments. Words don't just, you can't just say the words. God will see through to your heart every time. Rend your heart. And so it's all kind of not good, a not good scenario until we get to chapter 2, verse 18. So let me start with chapter 2, verse 15, and it says this, Blow the trumpet in Zion, declare a holy fast, and call a sacred assembly. Gather the people, consecrate the assembly, bring together the elders, gather the children, those nursing at the breast. Let the bridegroom leave his room and the bride her chamber, and let the priests who minister before the Lord weep between the temple porch and the altar. Let them say, Spare your people, O Lord. Do not make your inheritance an object of scorn, a byword among the nations. Why should they say among the peoples, Where is their God? Humble, a humble heart, as we talked about this morning, versus a self-righteous heart. Well, at least I'm not as bad as them. <laughs> Guess what? We all need grace. We all need a Savior. We've all messed up. And I don't care if you are trying to walk a right path, you're still going to mess up. But turn to the Lord each time. Don't pursue evil. And that's what I got to tell the people last yesterday. A whole crowd of people. And I said, it was like, it's like the, the two dogs inside of a person. And somebody says, which dog wins? And the older man says, it's the dog that you feed the most. So my message to them was, don't quit feeding the old dog. Don't keep feeding evil. Turn away from that and turn toward good. So that was my message. And then I, I delivered Psalm 23, the Lord is my shepherd. And it was a great time of testimony. But the Lord's answer in chapter 2, verse 18, it says, Then the Lord will be jealous for his land and take pity on his people. The Lord will reply to them, I am sending you grain, new wine, and oil enough to satisfy you fully. Never again will I make you an object of scorn to the nations. And listen to this. I will drive the northern army far from you, pushing it into a parched and barren land, with its front columns going into the eastern sea and those in the rear into the western sea and a stench will go up. I think we talked even about a stench that goes up because of self-righteousness. Its smell will rise, but surely he has done great things. Be not afraid, O land. Be glad and rejoice. Raise a hallelujah. Shout louder. Rejoice. Surely the Lord has done great things. Be not afraid, O wild animals. For the open pastures are becoming green. The trees are bearing their fruit. The fig tree and the vine yield their riches. Be glad, O people of Zion. Rejoice in the Lord your God. For He has given you the autumn rains in righteousness. He sends you abundant showers. Both autumn and spring rains as before. The threshing floors will be filled with grain. The vats will overflow with new wine and oil. How's this for a promise? We hear this a lot. I will repay you for the years the locusts have eaten, says the Lord. 
In chapter 2, verse 25, I will repay you. God says, I will repay you right here for the years the locusts have eaten. Never again will my people be ashamed in verse 26. And you will know that I am in Israel, that I am the Lord your God, that there is no other. Never again will my people be shamed. And then we get into the day of the Lord, which is what Joel is kind of all about. The day of the Lord. We think it's going to be, oh, pleasant and kind, but it's not. It's going to be terrible for the people who, who push him away, who say, no, I can't go there. I don't want you. Stay away from me. And finally, God will say, okay, that's what you want. That's what you're going to get. Peter quotes this in Acts chapter 2. But right here in Joel, verse 28 of chapter 2, it says, The day of the Lord. And afterward, I will pour out my spirit on all people. Your sons and daughters will prophesy. Your old men will dream dreams. Your young men will see visions. Even on my servants, both men and women, I will pour out my spirit in those days. I will show wonders in the heavens and on the earth, blood and fire and billows of smoke. The sun will be turned to darkness and the moon to blood before the coming of the great and dreadful day of the Lord. And everyone who calls on the name of the Lord will be saved. For on Mount Zion and in Jerusalem there will be deliverance, as the Lord has said, among the survivors whom the Lord calls. And the nations are judged. In chapter 3, it says, In those days and at that time, when I restore the fortunes of Judah and Jerusalem, I will gather all nations and bring them down to the valley of Jehoshaphat, the valley of decision. There I will enter into judgment against them, those naysayers, those who don't want me, concerning my inheritance and my people Israel. For they scattered my people among the nations and divided up my land. They cast lots for my people and traded boys for prostitutes. They sold girls for wine that they might drink. Oh boy. Straight from Joel, chapter 3, verse 4. Now what have you against me, O Tyre and Sidon, and all you regions of Philistia? Are you repaying me for something I have done? If you are paying me back, I will swiftly and speedily return on your own heads what you have done. For you took my silver and my gold and carried off my finest treasures to your temples. You sold the people of Judah and Jerusalem to the Greeks that you might send them far from their homeland. See, I am going to rouse them out of the places to which you sold them, and I will return on your own heads what you have done. I will sell your sons and daughters to the people of Judah, and they will sell them to the Sabaeans, a nation far away. The Lord has spoken. So chapter 3, it says that they scattered my people. They divided up my land. They cast lots for my people. Does that remind you of what they did to Jesus on the cross? They took his garment. They didn't want to tear it, so they gambled for it. They cast lots, and then they killed him. Proclaim this among the nations. Prepare for war. There's another song. We haven't sung very much. We sang it out of Portland Freedom Force Corps once. Prepare for war. Because nobody wants war. We want peace. We pray on our knees and we fight in the spirit. But it says, rouse the warriors. Let all the fighting men draw near and attack. And he says, beat your plowshares, your farming utensils, your peaceful utensils into swords and your pruning hooks into spears. And let the weakling say, I am strong. Well, I can do that one. I am strong in the Lord. Come quickly, all you nations from every side and assemble there. Bring down your warriors, O Lord, and let the nations be roused. We need the angels to fight with us. The angels are on our side. They're worshiping God. We can join with the angels. And do you know it's said that the angels are powerful? It's like one angel of death wiped out 185,000 men, warriors. 185,000. The angel of death went through the camp of Egypt and killed the firstborn. How powerful angels must be. If one angel can kill 185,000 people, 
It was by a plague. But how many angels are there? Will God be sending His angels to fight for us? Well, the Bible doesn't say how many angels there are. It names three of them, Michael and Gabriel, and it names Lucifer, the angel who was deceptive, who rebelled against God. But it says there's, at one point, there's 10,000 times 10,000 angels. That's, that's like 100 million. It's, they're numerous, innumerable. You can't count them all. And that's just the angels. They're the ones that are worshiping God. And don't you think that God has some power? If one angel can kill 185,000 people, fear him. Don't be afraid of what the devil can do to you, but fear God. Whom do you fear? If you turn to Luke 12, 5, this is what Jesus says. Jack McCord's thing just fell out of my back, my book. Uh, 12, 5. Luke 12, 5. I tell you, starting with 4, I tell you, my friends, do not be afraid of those who kill the body. And after that can do no more. But I will show you whom you should fear. Fear him who after killing the body has power to throw you into hell. And Jesus is speaking these words. Yes, I tell you, fear him. Are not five sparrows sold for two pennies? Yet not one of them is forgotten by God. Indeed, the hairs of your head are all numbered. Don't be afraid. You are worth more than sparrows. There's reason for a all joke right there, but who knows it? We don't have to mess with it. Amen. But fear God, the one who has the power to throw you into hell. There's a story of the rich man and Lazarus, and it's also in Luke. If you just turn to chapter 16, verse 19. And we talked about this in Sunday school, and I said, I'm, I'm reading all about it. And I tried to recount it by myself, and I, I got messed up on the details. But if, I, if we go right to the text and read it, starting with verse 19, it's called the rich man and Lazarus. What happens when we die? Well, Jesus says, there was a rich man in Luke 16, verse 19. A rich man who was dressed in purple and fine linen and lived in luxury every day. At his gate was laid a beggar named Lazarus, covered with sores and longing to eat what fell from the rich man's table. Even the dogs came and licked his sores. And the time came when the beggar died and the angels carried him to Abraham's side. Do you notice the angels are attending? This man of faith, the angels are there and they carry him to Abraham's side. And in fact, when Jesus said on the cross, today you will be with me in paradise, it's the shield, it's the holding place. Like Mary said, it's a, like a holding tank before Jesus. So the angels carried him to Abraham's side. And the rich man also died. And get this, he was buried. I don't see any mention of angels there. In hell, where he was in torment. He looked up and saw Abraham far away with Lazarus by his side, said to be a big chasm that no one could cross, no one could get aside, a big chasm. So the rich man called to him, Father Abraham, have pity on me and send Lazarus to dip the tip of his finger in water and cool my tongue because I am in agony in this fire. Again, Jesus is telling the story. But Abraham replied, Son, remember that in your lifetime you received your good things, while Lazarus received bad things, but now he is comforted here and you are in agony. And besides all this between us and you, a great chasm has been fixed, so that those who want to go from here to you cannot, nor can anyone cross over from there to us. He answered, Then I beg you, Father, send Lazarus to my father's house, for I have five brothers. Let him warn them, so that they will not also come to this place of torment. And Abraham replied, They have Moses and the prophets. Let them listen to them. No, Father Abraham, he said, 
But if someone from the dead goes to them, they will repent. And he said to him, if they do not listen to Moses and the prophets, they will not be convinced, even if someone rises from the dead. Straight from the Bible, straight from Jesus. The rich man had everything he needed. He didn't care at all about anybody, not until he was dead. He didn't care for his five brothers. He was self-caring. He only cared about himself. And we talked about that this morning. Self-righteous. Oh God, I'm so good. Look at all the good things I've done. So what? We all need grace and mercy. And the beggar says, he beat on his chest and he says, forgive me. Have mercy on me. That's what we need to cry. Have mercy upon me, O Lord. I need your mercy. I need your grace. So we'll wrap this up. I just finished with verse 10. Let the weakling say, I am strong. And then it says, come quickly, all you nations from every side, and assemble out there. Bring down your warriors, O Lord, and let the nations be roused. Let them advance into the valley of Jehoshaphat. For there I will sit to judge all the nations on every side. Swing the sickle, for the harvest is ripe. Come trample the grapes, for the winepress is full. For the vats overflow, so great is their wickedness. Song. Mine eyes have seen the glory of the coming of the Lord. Back in, the war, in Civil War time. Glory, glory, hallelujah. Multitudes, multitudes, God speaks in the valley of decision. For the day of the Lord is near. In the valley of decision, the sun and moon will be darkened and the stars no longer shine. The lion will roar from Zion and thunder from Jerusalem. The earth and the sky will tremble. But the Lord will be a refuge for his people, a stronghold for the people of Israel. Salvation in Jesus. Jesus our Messiah. There he is. Salvation. There are blessings for God's people. In verse 17, Then you will know that I, the Lord your God, dwell in Zion, my holy hill. Jerusalem will be holy. Never again will foreigners invade her. In that day, the mountains will drip new wine, and the hills will flow with milk, and the ravines of Judah will run with water. A fountain will flow out of the Lord's house and will water the valley of the Acacias. Like the Garden of Eden. Must have been awesome. Was awesome before sin entered the picture. And God will return us to that place. No more crying. No more weeping. No more suffering. No more warning. Warring. But Egypt, it says, will be desolate. Edom, a desert waste because of violence done to the people of Judah, in whose land they shed innocent blood. Judah will be inhabited forever, and Jerusalem through all generations. Their blood guilt, which I have not pardoned, I will pardon. There will be a time when even the Jewish people will say, forgive us, Lord. Surely Jesus is the Messiah. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. But until that time, blood is on our heads. Blood becomes upon all of us if we don't confess our sin to Jesus. Take my sin away. Remove it from me as far as the east is from the west. Set me free. And that's what we pray for. That the chains would be loosed, would be dropped. The Lord will dwell. The Lord dwells in Zion. He dwells inside of us. May it be so. May we reach our community with life and love and hope. We don't condemn anybody. It's not our place to judge. We don't like evil. We hate it. Like God hates evil. It was brought up again this morning. God hates sin. And is one sin lesser than another or bigger or greater? No. If you sin, you are walking away from God saying, I don't want you. When you sin, notice, not, notice I didn't say if you sin, but when you sin, stop it. Turn to the Lord and say, I did it again, I'm sorry. And he will have compassion. Like 70 times, 70, how many times do we have to forgive? How many times do we have to go to the Lord? 
How about every day? And he promises he will restore what the enemy is stealing, has stolen, has taken, has devoured. He will restore it when it's right. When the time is right. When he, he says, I can't take it anymore. Now. And maybe it would be today. We don't know. It sure seems like it's getting closer. How long, oh Lord? So is your heart ready and right before him? I, I joke about we don't know what's going to come our way. Like a plane could fall on your house. I've said that before. Did anybody see the video of a little plane dropping in Oregon? Like straight down out of the sky and landed on somebody's house. You just don't know. Fortunately, the people in the house were not killed. Two people in the plane were immediately killed. But we don't know. So is our heart ready? What if anything happens? You name it. I won't go into the details, but let's pray. Let's, let's uh, give our hearts to the Lord. Heavenly Father, we come before you and we thank you for your word. And we thank you that we have your word. And we pray that we would continue to study your word because you are our hiding place. We can say, we who are weak, we are strong in the Lord. We can put on the full armor of God and, and stand and fight in the spirit because we don't wrestle against flesh and blood, but we fight against spirit. The rulers, the authorities, the powers, and the principalities of evil, we stand against those things by the blood of Jesus. We put on the breast, the uh, belt of truth, the breastplate of righteousness, the shoes with the gospel of peace to reach out and to love, the shield of faith, and with the other hand, we put on the helmet of salvation and we pick up the sword, which is the spirit of the word of God. And that's how we fight. And Father, I pray that we would repent, each one of us. We would turn from our wicked ways. We would turn to you and keep walking to you. And we pray that there would be a release in our community. People who are afraid or ashamed or whatever. Lord, that's up to you. All we can do is be obedient and love as best we can. Take everything that we have, Lord. Multiply it like our little fishes and loaves. And do the miraculous. In Jesus' name. Amen. And speaking of miraculous, thank you for um, the recognition on Pastor's Day or whatever. Someone gave me a shirt. And it says, what does it say? You might have to read it. Kelly? Can you read it? I'm not a miracle worker, but I can lead you to someone who is. Yeah, I'm a pastor. I'm not a miracle worker, but I can lead you to Jesus. <laughs> so thank you for being friends, and thank you for coming here. And let's take the love of Jesus outside. Amen. Amen. And if you want prayer, then stick around and uh, let's pray for each other.